In this video, I'm going to give you my complete tutorial to getting more stops in the red zone in Madden 21 with match defense. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my name is Cody and my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player. Now, I do that and share that with you through getting better myself every day, through learning from players and through studying uh, tape and things like that. So, if you want to subscribe, it's completely free, but I would highly recommend doing that. Basically, what subscribing does is it just allows you to know whenever we release new videos that are going to help you. So, again, it's just a win-win for you guys to subscribe. It's completely free. And if you have any questions about it, you can always text me my cell phone number personal cell phone number is literally in the top left hand corner so you can ask me any question you want whenever you want okay guys so I wanted to talk a little bit about red zone defense and I want to talk a little bit about specifically um, the nickel 33 three, or um, not the 35 version but the, the nickel normal version when I get inside the 10 I like to go down into the nickel normal version and run a lot of cover four quarters now, um, what, I, what I always do, though, is I always audible to it from 335 wide. I don't ever come out in normal um, unless I – the only time I come out in normal, I sometimes do it on the, on the goal line just because, you know, I know they're going to run. Or, or, like, it's, it's less likely they're going to pass, like, inside the five. But, but anyways, so I want to give you two specific setups um, or two specific things that people are probably going to do inside inside the five yard line. The first one is they're going to try to run the ball. Um, so we're going to cover that. And the second one is they're going to try to throw some type of corner route or, or other route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and bunch tight in and I'm going to throw um, Tyler Irving in the slot so that I can audible down to I form. And the play that we're going to be going over is the play inside switch from um, from the bunch tight end because it's, it's a similar it, you're gonna see a lot of similar route combinations so what I like to do is whenever I'm in the red zone is I will basically come out and audible to cover for quarters I'll pinch my defense and then I will always 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 bring these safeties over the tackle you want them over the tackle that's gonna help them play the run better and then you're going to use her the, the weak side safety. So in this example, um, that would be Jackson. Okay, I'm going to use her Jackson. Now, one of the things you have to understand about in the red zone is it is almost guaranteed that people are going to try to throw the ball to the flats almost every single time. So there's a couple things you have to watch out for. The first one is curls. The second one is seam wheel routes. And the third one is corner routes or post routes. Okay. Quarters does pretty good against all of those things. So all we're going to do is we're going to shade our coverage down. So we have a hard flat on the right side. If the running back shoots out to the flat, we've got a linebacker going in that vicinity. The next thing that I like to do is I like to man up. I always, always, always man up the running back in the red zone. Every time, it doesn't matter what. I will literally always, always, always do that just to be safe against any type of route the running back could be on. Even if he's on an option route, you'll see this coverage will be very effective against that. The next thing that I like to do is I like to put seam flat on that left side slot. It's going to allow us to get a jam, and he's going to do a good job at playing flat routes and out routes in the same zone. Obviously, we have our quarters coverage over there, and then we have this outside quarter on the right to be able to handle anything that might um, be an issue. Now, the last thing that I do is I will typically leave um, four or three-man blitz here um, just because I think it does a better job against the run. If they run the ball, you have a really good defense here. This is really, really good defense for run. You're just going to shoot through in between. You see the little shadows at the bottom right of the screen here um, by the lineman. I want to shoot. That tells me where I want to shoot. I want to shoot right there. Now, if I move him over here, then I wouldn't want to do that. But as you can see here, I want to be like right here. Okay? And, and really, I want to be like right in this area. So, all that to say, if you watch, this is a very popular uh, setup in the, in the red zone right here. Okay? Something like that. And I just want you to watch it. Stamp the ball. Oh, we got flat. Oh, 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 oh. And everything's taken away. Now, we're going to jump into instant replay, and I want to cover um, this pass defense. Now, again, I can't, I cannot possibly in, you know, a 10-minute video cover every route that they can do in the red zone. Some of this is tendency, but this is a base call. This is my base call in the red zone. As you can see here, um, I think people will run the tight end to the flat on an out route or on a corner route more than people think. So as you can see here, the tight end is taken away completely. I mean, there's nothing he can do. Last backside here, um, look at the seam flat. So you see the jam, and then he just follows him to the flat. Perfect. 
The three rec sits on the cur sits on the hitch very well. And then the outside quarter does a good job. I mean, you could probably throw that like right there, but it's a tight throw. And I'll, I'll live with that. I'll live with some curls uh, in, the, in, in the red zone. The other thing that I like to do personally, and I don't, I can't prove for beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is like the way to do it, but I love to shade my coverage down. Um, I shade my coverage inside and underneath in the red zone. And the reason why I do that is because it does a really good job, in my opinion, against curl routes. Now, what if they run, um, like this to me is a setup you'll see in the red zone also. So my lurk is almost guaranteed. I'm going to jump to the tight end streak first, and then I'm going to work back to the left side almost every time. So you see here I have hard flats on the outside. Now, I can choose to leave that. I almost will always, like I said, put that seam flat over there. I just think that seam flat does a really good job. It gets a jam on the slot, and it does a good job against out routes. And then what you'll see is I'll almost always man up the running back like this, and we have basically bracketed coverage on the tight end. So at the snap of the ball, the square receiver go this way here, and as you can see, everything is bagged up. And if we look back into the instant replay, you'll see every route. And these are popular. These are popular setups. Um, at least this is what I would do in the red zone. But take a look here. I just don't see a lot of people doing this in the red zone. Um, so look at this. The corner route the tight end is taken away. Back flat is taken away. Right. The only thing I don't like is that we double covered him. But it is what it is. I want to see if we can. I want to see if we could save ourselves an adjustment on that running back. Um, but I just don't know if we can or not. I mean, you pro. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We'll come back to that in a second. But um, on the left side here, you see the flat is open. But I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It's tender. It's tender. Uh, and then the hitch is bad, completely taken away, and the the post route is completely taken away. Okay. So now I want to go through one more one more uh, setup that is very popular. Uh, at least what I would do if I was running like a bunch or bunch tight end or something like that in the red zone. Um, and I needed to pass from about the 10-yard line and in. So, again, you want to come over here with this. This guy is your user, okay? When, I, when I'm when i inside the red zone, I do not anymore use a linebacker. I never use a linebacker in the red zone, ever. But this is a setup that I think, um, I think you'll see. So it's basically a post route, a slant, and then a corner motion over. Like, this setup's really good in my opinion. So what you'll notice is when you motion out of a bunch, you create a two-by-two. Two. It changes the matching principle. It changes the rules a little bit. So um, let's do this. We're just going to um, shade our coverage inside and underneath again. And then we're going to put our seam flat to the left. Now on the right side, we're going to pretty much do the same thing. The only difference that we might do is we might take this linebacker just because we, um, if you think about the route the running back can run, when he's manned up, it's basically the only route that he's going to be able to win on is some type of in route or option route, which we can use or that with our guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, whoops, I'm going to take um, this, this player here and put him on a curl flat or, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a hook. But a curl flat or a hook, in my opinion, will help a little bit. So anyway, that's the setup. We're going to motion Devonte Adams over, and I just want you to watch how this plays. So there, and I know i got to take this. And as you see, if I let the slant go, I can go take the post. Let me show you the replay. So the running back... To the flat is taken away. Corners taken away. Okay. That initial read there. Now, if you look right here, the only thing I don't like is I don't like that the left side receiver lets him go or left side corner. But you see, he does play that slant. See that? So if I just take if I just take the um, the tight end route, I've got it, I've got it taken care of. Okay? I've got it taken care of. Now, what if they run? You might be asking, well, this is actually really, really, really good run defense. Um and all you're going to do is whichever side the tight end is on, so you bring these guys down. Okay, the tight end's on this side. Okay, I'm going to come down with this right here. That's it. Snap of the ball. And you, you should get pretty – and, of course, we didn't have a great shoot there. 
But um, you should get pretty easy run defense out of this. I mean, it shouldn't be too crazy. Um, you know, I, I guarantee you they will try to run. But as you'll see here, I'm already bringing these guys down anyway, right at the snap. They can't, um, and they can audible immediately, but it's it's tricky. Anyway, power O here, and there we are. You want to you want to make sure, and I talked about this in another video I did on this defense. You want to make sure that your user, so you bring this guy down. I want to get this guy right in here, either here or here, either one of these two spots. I prefer probably here, actually. Okay? This guy's coming down right here, and I want to make sure that he... You see how he's blitzing the right? That won't work. I want him blitzing left, right there. Okay? And this is ISO. As you see, we do a decent job. Okay? So, you know, that's that's the run defense. It's really, really easy. Um, one other thing that you could do is, like, if they audible down, you know what I mean? If they audible down, then you can essentially flip the play and do the same, and then and then re re pinch them like this. Just that little adjustment right there puts the slot corner on the right side. And now what you can do is you can basically blitz, or you can spy the triangle player. So now it's going to open up the gaps a little bit more. And I didn't do a good job of shooting there, but that's going to open up the gaps a little bit more. Um, for you to be able to shoot it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So you come out and you set up your defense just like this, right? Let's say you do this. And then they go like this. They're going to go audible. You flip and pinch. And voila, you're back. And I would just sling this guy out of the way. And there you see. You see how I mean, you could drive a truck through that gap. I mean, it's wide open for you to come through. Okay, now again, it's easier to shoot gaps without two controllers, but that's how you do it. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. The full defensive ebook's in the description. It's really, really good, guys. Um, it, it's, it's the best defense for the Classic. I guarantee you that. So, thanks for watching, and, uh, and we'll, see you guys, um, we'll see you guys on stream tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. If you have any questions, text me. And again, if you want to get the ebook, there's a link to it in the description. If you want to get a free sample, just text me.